stand up, Marlene. She was there from the moment I met him to the last moment I saw him, and we didn't know any, didn't know each other. Can I say? Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, Tell me your name, please. Marlene, Aaron. And I've known Alan since around 1972, but I never really knew Ann, and I knew Alan through Sue. I asked him, I was one of the caregivers at the end, and I said, how did you ever meet? Because he's kind of in and out over the years. He said Soupy dancing, and, and then there was Fisherman's Wharf. We were both selling, he was selling his poetry and crystals, and I was selling macrame belts. <laughs> and then in the 80s, I, I, um, I was a fundraiser and organizer for the Freeze campaign, and um, one of the things I did was to do the poetry reading with Miriam Patchen and Jean Ruggles and Alan Cohn and many other people. And it was an ordinary experience. And I had, been, I had wanted to draw Alan while he was alive, and it didn't happen. And I asked Dan and she, if, for her permission, and she said yes. And I did two drawings of his face, and it was like saying a prayer. And it was... It was extraordinary and Ann and I are talking and she was saying do you know how we met and no and she said oh, I was at a poetry reading at Noe Valley Ministry and Jean Ruggles was there and Miriam Patchen and I said well was it a fundraiser she said yeah I said I produced that event and I didn't I didn't know Ann then but that's that's how they met and and then it's Ann and I were together our last night when Alan was taken away so yeah thank you One of the wailing women that I heard about? There were four wailing women? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were the wailing women. Yeah, we were. We, we, were, really were. <laughs> we just, we just exodus <laughs> and just went in the grass and just cried. Yeah. Any other experiences with that? Yes, Maria Mango. Maria Mango, oh, right. my Maria sweet, Mango. sweet girl, was with me when we brought Alan home. And she stayed with me through that whole time to just make it, was it magical? It was magic every moment. Constant meditation. We were just we were doing everything we can to make this man feel comfortable. During he, you know, he couldn't have had it better for this time. And he got to marry the love of his life again. It's just an incredible, incredible story. I'm <laughs> so how I, I came to know Alan, um, I've been helping this brother, James Beckett, plant flowers up in the Haight-Ashbury when you guys are walking around under the bottoms of the trees there. <laughs> and so it was truly that flower power that, that, that brought Alan and I together. Um, Me to 
start writing poetry. I was already doing songs, but you know, it doesn't have to rhyme, and that's <laughs> pretty, that opens a lot. <laughs> Miscellaneous instruments. Yeah. Well, we need to. We had a, we had a bell guy. Over here. Oh. Mm. Oh. And yeah, so you know, it's really, really magical that you're all back here on Hippie Hill again. You know, because there's a lot of us. You know, with this, I'm here every day. You know, there's a lot of us that are living this. Like, you know, it's not something just that happened back then. It's very alive, and you know. Bringing the old school and the new school together, you know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> really <laughs> building that bridge, you know, you know, it's 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 coming, it's coming real. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, yes, please, please. Uh, I'm Bruce Bruckman uh, from the Bay Guardian. And the Guardian, uh, right. thank you. <laughs> the Guardian started in 1966, at the same time that the Oracle started. And since I'm here representing the, uh, the journalism community, I'll make this journalistic. But uh, you, with Alan, of course, you never could just be journalistic because it was spiritual journalism of some kind that a lot of us hard-nosed journalists didn't never quite understand, except we knew that it was something special. Any event. We all, at those days, printed at Howard Quinn's. And the barb was there, and Max Scher with his nutty operation, and the Oracle came in, and we were printing, and everybody was there because it was basically kind of cheap. And Howie Quinn had this great capitalistic way of operating. He gave you the first one free, and then you had to bring in enough money to do the next one. And so the trick that Alan and the Berkeley Barb and, and, and those folks managed to be able to do was to figure out how to get enough money to do the next issue. In any event, the first night, this was a story, I've never quite pinned it down, but the, the, the story and Quinn's amongst the rough and tough union printers there, the pressmen, the stereotypers, was that Alan and his troop came in and they said, oh, they were all in bare feet and they were all smoking marijuana, they were all <laughs> full-flowered hippies, and they came in and they confronted the pressmen. And they said, we want color. We want all kinds of color. Well, they didn't do color like that at the, at the press. So finally one of the pressmen, who was the, the foreman at the time, I think his name was Sanchez, said, well, you guys just go ahead and do it, thinking they didn't know how to do it and wouldn't do it. But they took the colors from the ink, and they went around and they put the color in all the ink wells. No idea what went where. No idea register, nothing. You just color. And out comes the oracle in all this blaze of color. And it was an absolute, utter miracle in a sense because nothing like this had ever quite been done in American journalism or anywhere else. It was a first. And there it was down at Howard Quinn for these pressmen. So that's what happened. Every issue when the Oracle came in, they'd come in and they'd have enough money to print the next issue. And that was always the key in those days. You'd have enough money to print the next issue. And in they would come, they'd fill the, the ink wells, and out would go the Oracle to the rest of the world. So in, in, a, in, in this great spiritual metaphysical self sense, uh, Alan Cohen was a real pioneer in journalism. And uh, I, I, whenever I give speeches out, I always give him credit for this because... He really was a pioneer and uh, and recognized in this little niche in journalism. So I'm, I'm delighted to be here today, and I urge all of you to go back and read the Oracle. And I hope that uh, there'll be another way to reprint the Oracle of that era and bring it into uh, into our century. Yeah. Hey. Yeah.